Hello everyone, it's time once again to bring out another engine to the 71 Custom Showcase fleet, and today's model is Gordon the Big Engine himself. Let's get into it. I bought my first Gordon model back in 2021. He was from my friend Flying Scott Films, or Dax, who had painted him in a BR blue and never bothered to finish him. The plan was to reuse the Bachman shell, but paint it to be more like the shell. I eventually did complete the shell, but I didn't like the way it looked. The Bachman shell is just too wrong in my opinion. Also, my skills back then were terrible. <laughs> During the last Edison show, I gave the old Gordon shell to Cole for him to do whatever he wants. We kind of have a plan, but that can wait till another time. Back on Gordon, it was time to make a new and improved Gordon the Big Engine. I messaged the LBSC Thomas and bought the Gordon files he sells. They were then printed by yours truly. The footplate had some issues printing, but other than that, it came out pretty good. I then sanded and wet sanded the model to remove any print lines or errors. I used 200 to 300 grit sandpaper to make it all nice and smooth. I did have to use some Tamiya putty in certain spots to cover up some cracks or indents, but overall Gordon came out good. I then printed some buffer files Cole gave me, so thanks Cole. And after another quick sanding, Gordon was ready for painting. I'll admit, Gordon was difficult to paint correctly. For one, because I live in the New England area of America, it's either always windy or cold. It was both that day. Bruh. I painted the shell in the same blue I used for Thomas, and then used the Rustoleum matte black to paint his smoke box. The footplate was a nightmare to paint. Here's how it went down. First, I painted up in the stone gray. Check. Then I masked it up to paint it in the apple red. Check. And now time to add his black arches and buffer heads in the tester's black. This is where it failed because the paint would bleed through the Tamiya tape and it forced me to start all over again. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. Oh, by the way, never use tester's paint unless you're like one of the 3% of modelers that can use it. The steam pipe Archie's thingy I painted and then like Brendan Rees 10, I had to send them down because they would not fit correctly. So our good friend Glue would come in. For his roof and whistle, you know, I didn't even bother priming them. I just slapped on their respective colors and slid those into Gordon. And after all that trial and error process, Gordon was ready for lining. Same as everyone else except Toby and Duck, Gordon's lining was custom cut using vinyls. It was a bit tricky getting both the red and yellow on, but I made it work. It's a hell of a better job than what I made back in 2021. Ugh, what ugly lining. For his handrails, I used some of the cow scale hand knobs. Unfortunately, this was around the time that the cow scale ones were sold out, so I had to use what I can and basically do the Godred way of taking old parts off of old model trains for the new ones. And because of the different companies, but the Bachman hand knobs are slightly bigger. This isn't an issue on camera as you can't tell the difference, but it really bothers me. And Duck suffers this issue as well, so it looks like his handrails are bent more than they should. But fear not, I will replace them eventually but not right now. College is busy work. However, this wasn't the only issue when it came to having to find the parts for this guy, which brings me into my next segment. As some of you may recall, I had announced on Twitter I would be bringing Gordon to the Edison train show, but because there were so many things to buy to make him, as well as the time it would have taken, I decided not to bring him. At the time, I was saving up my money to buy stuff at Edison, so as you can imagine, I wasn't keen on spending a little close to $100 to finish the motor and tender. Gordon was missing a lot of parts like his side rod gear movement, as well as the whole tender. Thankfully, it only costed me $50 just to complete the main Gordon, and I had a Visa gift card from when I became an Eagle Scout this past June. When all the parts arrived, I began to finish Gordon. His wheels were already painted in the correct blue, so really the only thing left to do was add his new side rods and pistons that were from the LBSC Thomas's Gordon files. The drawbar from his front bogey to the main chassis was a pain. For whatever reason, it just randomly broke, so I did the only thing I could think of. Henry's drawbar broke. Oh, you got to be f***ing with me. However, I had a solution. I would just end up using a random side rod that I found, which was a good rough size. I'll have to go back and get the proper part because this one is a tiny bit too long. To the camera, it's fine, but because I have an eagle eye for this sort of thing, it really bothers me. The last step was to cut down the back bogey wheel to better match the shell. It was then glued down with super glue, and boom! 
Gordon's main shell was done. Thanks, Michael, for your help, by the way. Now, on to the tender. After getting back to work and getting the numbers in my bank account up again, I would order a brand new Gordon tender. Once it arrived, I gave it a quick sanding. The underside I took and sprayed it black to get rid of that ugly gray. Like all other Gordon customs, the tender was modified from the initial Bachman mold, so the same would be done here. I borrowed my friend's Dremel tool as mine was in New Jersey. Surprisingly, Mega the Cut turned out alright. It was the stuff afterwards that wasn't all right. To make the tender more show accurate, I would need plastic card or styrene sheets or whatever you want to call them. The problem was I had left them in New Jersey and didn't want to spend another $16 on Amazon to get new ones. So I would go to my favorite place, Michael's. I couldn't find the plastic card, but I found this substitute card. Surely this will work, right? It did, but then there were some errors I noticed and then it fell apart. Ugh, lesson learned. Don't buy the cheap stuff, just cough up the money. I ordered some more plastic card off Amazon and began from square one again. After getting it all in place, it was time for paint. Again. Luckily, the weather was nice that day and no stupid wind. Actually, it's a good time since it's getting cold out. After all respected colors were added, lining was then slapped on. I decided not to do back lining because I'm tired and I really want to rest and I don't want to do this anymore. His number four was added and then boom! We have Gordon the Big Engine. This model was fun to make, but stressful at times. I find myself rushing these projects and videos, so they don't always look the best, but with Gordon, I'm actually satisfied with both. I took the time and then experimented editing this on my laptop instead of my phone, and while it's a much more slower pace for me, I kind of like it more. So yeah, I think I'll be doing this from now on, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop making these videos. It's just going to take longer. I have a couple more videos in the works, so be on the lookout for them. Gordon, I definitely want to fix some things down the line, but overall, I'm satisfied with him. If you want to make one for yourself, you can message the LBSC Thomas and buy the files from them directly. Or if you want them printed, I would recommend going to my friend Mixed Traffic Engine 206. He has all the up-to-date files for every NOAA train file, plus he gives out good deals, so I would highly recommend him. Well, that seems to be all the time I have for now. This is LBSC 71. Ciao, folks. Hello, Gordon. Did you lose your blue? No, you lost your red paint. What, me? Oh, fuck.